What's up guys, Jacob from Fuel Tech USA. We're here with another Tech Tuesday and we're gonna go over everything you need to know about the Power FT data logger, how to save logs, download logs, send logs. We're gonna cover all that today. Then it's like bow, 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 bow. I like them country ones. So a common question we get from guys that are new to Fuel Tech or just new to data logging computer stuff in general is how do I download a log or what's my procedure after I make a run? So that's kind of where we're gonna go. Let's just say we just made a run and we gotta pull a log and we gotta send it to the tuner. How are we gonna do that? So, okay, we get back, just made a run. We're gonna plug into our ECU, plug into our laptop. And most of this is gonna be on the screen. We're about to hop on there and show you on that side. All right, so we got our laptop open and we're gonna plug in. Now you see it lit up, we can read, write ECU, we have data logger memory at the bottom. The first thing before we even pull a log is to read the ECU that says FT550 logger test. I did this just for this video. That way we have the most current tune open and that's the tune that's gonna attach to the file when we open map from log. I can, I can show you that in a second. This is uh, something we run on our test bench, this tune. Then we click, come over here, click data logger. You don't even move the mouse, it opens up the data logger software. Then we click download. We have two logs, one, normally if you come back with two logs, then maybe your data logger settings, you revved it up or you did a burnout, that's the, that's the shorter log. Usually the last log, longer log is gonna be your pass. We click okay to download this log. So nothing too crazy here. This is just all with our RPM simulator on our bench, but the way you'll save it, name it, let's go to save as. Uh, a good, good way to do this is every time you go to the track, make a new folder. Let's go new folder. Let's say we're at Rockingham today. Rockingham 513. Then we'll click that folder and we can call this run whatever it is. Maybe it's your first test run and it spins. T1 spin. We save that. So now anytime we come back, we can go to our folder. We can see our Rockingham folder, see every pass we made this day. Just keep saving them in the same folder as you go. As far as sending a data log, it's actually pretty simple on here. We have a button right at the top in the middle, send log by email. From, you put your email. To, whoever you're sending it to. And message, uh, we'll say T1, it spun. Hit our checkbox at the bottom. Send, and it's gonna ask a like a CAPTCHA, a little QR code kind of thing we gotta type in. And it's sent. So I mentioned before about reading the tune before we download the log because we have the option here to open map from log. It can be helpful if you've got a bunch of runs on a car. Sometimes you get off in left field or you wanna go back to the tune you had in the car this day, then if we open map from log, you're about to open over your current map. Do you wanna proceed? Yes. This map is the map that was running when this log was made, which can be pretty useful getting back and forth. You don't have to save the tune every time, or maybe you forget to do it. You can pull it back from the log. So now we went over how to download your log, how to send your log, if, if you need to do something like that. We didn't go over a lot of log analysis, but we will now. A good tool for you guys to have, they're super cheap. Get a flash drive, like something like this. I think this thing's like a terabyte and it's like 20 bucks. And even if you don't use it all the time, it's not a bad idea to maybe 
once every six months, once a year, send everything from your laptop back over to this flash drive. That way you don't ever lose everything and have to start over. You don't want to lose all that data. So I'm going to plug this in, pull a run up, and we'll go through checking some channels, kind of how to search around on the logger, and kind of help you guys navigate that a little better. So now from our flash drive, I pulled up this example log. This is from a few years ago, I think 2022. This was our COO, Louis De Leon. You guys know him. When he was driving the Chili Willys car for Brian Shaw, that's a 959. This was big tire, six kids. This was a pretty serious, pretty serious car here. But it's got some cool stuff we can check out on the log. And you're gonna show it like, boom, boom, I'm burning out and shit. So some of you guys may notice mine has a black background. By default, you have a white background. To me, the black background is just easier to see with some of the colors, but a way to change that is at the top, we hit view and white if we want the white background or black if we want the black. This stuff, pixels, this just tells you how thick the lines are. Maybe you can't see it good, you want a thicker line, you can do three pixels. One's good for most stuff. This is just, show values on the graph. So this is the RPM line, it shows 7,000. And you can also choose to show the names on the graph. So now it shows RPM beside it. We'll leave that up just so it's easier for you guys to follow along some of the channels. So say there's something in particular you're trying to keep an eye on, like let's say we've been working on the chassis, we wanna see what the shocks are doing. Instead of scrolling through this big long list, we can hit the magnifying glass and type in shock. This car had two, a rear right and a front right. We can pull that data up here. Sometimes we get a color that's hard to see or we got, okay, both of these are a green line. An easy way to change it is if you right click on the value, it'll cycle through some different colors. Find something easier to see. There's, oh, there's a pink, pink and a green. That's easy to see. Then we'll, Okay, we're done looking at shocks. We can turn that off. If there's something else you want to look at, any of, uh, I don't know, oil pressure, fuel pressure, you can just type in pressure. So, fuel pressure channel. Bottle pressure, whatever we need to look at. That's another one. And if you left click on the value, you can make the line a little bold like that. Kind of makes it two pixels instead of one. We can right click, change the color, so now that's easier to see. Something else cool you can do with the logger, um, if we look on the right side, it says session at the top. So our name already has 60 foot, 330, 660. We can go to session, click this little notepad here. You can put driver, car, weight, what track you were at, all of this. And then you can enter your incremental. So we'll scoot this over so we can see them. Copy this over, that's 963, 251, and 376 with a two, and our speed is 197. Then when we click OK, what's nice about doing this is it's gonna overlay right on our log. So we'll hit OK. And there we go. There's 60 foot, shows exactly in the run where we were. 330, 660. It's nice to lay your incrementals on here. So if you're trying to nitpick, trying to get faster to the middle or something like that, it's easy to see, okay, where exactly is the middle? And you can even, you can go further on this just depending how much time you have. You can put in weather. There's a ton of weather stuff you can put in here. Usually you don't have this much time between rounds. It's like, something you would do on the ride home or after the race or at the night when you're done racing. If you're a big weather guy, you wanna put that stuff in here and it'll always be attached to this log when you open it again. Something else that's pretty useful on here is we have fuel table overlay, ignition table overlay, and O2 correction overlay. Basically, if we click fuel table overlay, 
It's going to open the fuel table that's in our current map we have open. And if we want to lay over and see where the car runs through, like try to try to fix our correction or something, this is an easy way to do it. We can see exactly where we are on the map uh, anywhere in the run. Same thing with timing, same thing with O2 correction. It's kind of nice to be able to just lay it over in real time versus, okay, I got 5% correction here and I got to go back to the fuel table and find that spot. With the overlay, it's easy to change. We'll open that back up. We'll make a change and send it just so you guys can kind of see how it works. We'll go, okay, right here. We're, we're up here at 6,000. We're just gonna grab it and add 5% all the way across. To do a percentage, we'll hit the hotkey for multiply. So M 1.05, and it even tells us right there, plus 5%. Tell it okay. Send to FT manager. Now it's gonna send us right over. You can see that big giant lump we just put there, 5%, but that's kind of to show you guys how to edit something there and get it back over here. Something else kind of cool about our data logger, if you're coming from another system, your zero second spot is always based on the trans brake release. So you don't have to set your zero point for when the you let go of the trans brake or try to get that just right. It's automatically like that in every log. That's why if you see this log, Way back here, it shows negative numbers like minus 30 seconds, minus 32. That's 30 seconds before you release the trans brake. Your zero points always when you leave. Just to give you guys a rundown, some of the more tools here that, that we have. Um, you can set the zero time. If for whatever reason you don't want it on the trans brake release, you're trying to figure out something in the middle here, you can set a zero time anywhere you want. Follow cursor gives you the option. so. Do I want this thing to follow my cursor everywhere I go? I usually prefer not to because I'll get to a certain spot. I'm trying to look at something. I click, it stays there. Then you can go through and check out channels at that point. Uh, if you, let's say you come in here and there's a ton of random stuff open. Something you can do is clear all graphs. It's got everything gone and then you just turn on the things you want. Like, okay, I want RPM, I want G meter, and I want drive shaft. So that's an easier way to clear everything out and get going. Uh, status events, that'll just tell you if there was an error of some kind, it lost crank trigger, an injector came unplugged, something like that, it's gonna be there. Min and max values is nice if you're trying to see what was the highest RPM I turned or something. It'll tell you in the log max value, and max value time. And there's some other stuff. You guys, you're, you're not gonna hurt a log. If you've got a log and you wanna play with it, you wanna come in here and click on everything you can. You can play log, it plays through like it's during the run. Starting at zero, you see it going by. If we go to tools, you, if you wanna set distance channel, zero point, like if you're trying to measure distance through the G meter, you can click that and tell it where to put it. If you want your shocks to read zero right at the line, you can set it right at zero. Let that thing load. And with that setting, now our shocks are zero when we leave the line. That's an easy way to tell you what the shocks are doing. You can see, okay, this one went down an inch. This one went down three tenths of an inch. But some guys like it to be zero versus, okay, I gotta do the math. Like when I left, it was two inches and it moved to three and a half. That kind of takes the math out of it for you. There's also some other cool tools like compare graph or log info. It'll tell you like what time the log was downloaded, but this was a pretty good overview. You guys are, are gonna be a little more dangerous with your logs now, know how to download them, send them, move stuff around. So that pretty much covers everything you guys need to know about navigating your data log a little better, how to save it, organize it, send it. If you gotta send it somewhere, you're getting some help with it. If you guys see something we missed or something you want a little more explanation on, leave a comment below or reach out, give me or any of the other tech guys a call and we'll get you taken care of. And we'll see you next Tuesday.